So I'm really pleased to be joined now by Dr. Rakesh Suri. Rakesh, as many of you know, is from the Mayo Clinic and is uh, really one of the rising stars in cardiac surgery. Rakesh, thanks for joining me. Thank so, you. So, you know, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about robotic surgery, but, uh, you know, you're, you're, as I said, in, in the field and you've been in the field. There have been a lot of changes in mitral surgery, isn't that right? Yeah, it's an exciting time for mitral valve surgery, Randy, as you know. Perhaps the most exciting thing in the last year or so is the fact that primary care physicians cardiologists are beginning to really understand the importance of referring patients early. So we have some embargo data uh, from Mayo Clinic right. that Marie Serrano and I are working on that uh, details that patients sent without symptoms when they have severe mitral regurgitation right. before the onset of triggers. Now triggers even being atrial fibrillation or pulmonary hypertension, right. those patients if they go to surgery within three months of a diagnosis actually do better with long-term survival and freedom from heart failure. That's exciting That's news. That's pretty good news. That's good. I mean good data to have. That's what we've always felt. Many of us have felt that but hard to prove that. Absolutely. And now this is multi-center data in the absence of a randomized trial that will be very important. So uh, embargo data once again, but I wanted to give you a little snapshot. That's great. That's great. Tell me about the status of robotic mitral surgery. Where do we stand with that? Yeah, good question. So robotics is really a tool and it's a tool to get patients to surgery earlier. So what are the main advantages? The main advantages are it improves patient acceptance and it allows patients to benefit from the full spectrum of mitral valve repair. So in other words, patients aren't being sent for just posterior leaflet disease, but anterior leaflet and bileaflet. There's several tips that I advise surgeons and several features of robotics we, like, we have to keep in mind. First, number one, it's the same operation. There's no difference. People often ask me, well, it's a, it's a different operation. How do you know what the outcomes will be? Simply put, there's no stitch, there's no band, there's no technique that we utilize in open surgery that we don't utilize in robotics. Number two, we repair all categories of leaflet prolapse, from posterior leaflet to anterior leaflet to bileaflet. Okay. Point number three, it's safe. We know that. We've published data from Mayo, Cleveland, right. Doug Murphy in Atlanta, right. Right. and Lee Seawick and others. It's a safe operation if several a priori features are adhered to, including a pre-robotic CT angiogram of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. Next point is that actually people wonder, is it too long? Does it take too long? Yeah, and that's the, it's a longer pump run. Yeah, and it's actually not anymore. When okay. we look at our cross clamp times, the mean cross clamp time is about 30 to 40 minutes for a posterior leaflet prolapse. Okay. Or for anterior bileaflet disease, it's about 45 to 60 minutes from the Mayo Clinic data. That all translates into two key benefits for patients. Number one, patients get out of hospital quicker. In our series, routinely, three days. Okay. Uh, they get back to work quicker. We know that they get returned to employment-based activities more swiftly. And finally, we know that quality of life outcomes within the first few months after robotic mitral valve repair are slightly better than open. Now, albeit they normalize at about six months to okay. a year, okay. but early differences are, are it's definitely there. So, so Rakesh, is, you know, you're, you're convincing me, um, so let me play the devil's advocate. Is, should it, this only be done in a few centers that have high volume and high expertise? I mean, the cost of the equipment has been a, a deterrent to some to get into this. Or should every young mitral surgeon learn how to do robotic repair? Yeah, these are two key points, Randy. The first is who should be doing mitral surgery in general, yeah, and then right. the sub, sub point is robotics, and the second is cost. We'll address each of them quickly here. The first is a narrative that's um, been, been um, sort of discussed by Bowling, Cami, and others, right. and it's as follows, that, that a surgeon is required to perform a certain minimum volume of surgery to be facile with more complex mitral valve disease. And that carries over into the ro robotic milieu. So in other words, a, a robot is not gonna make a surgeon a fantastic mitral valve repair surgeon if you're not already doing a high volume mitral valve surgery. So that's a, that's a discussion that's ongoing in the mitral community in general. The second is regarding the cost picture. And this is important because the robotic upfront cost of the equipment, the team training, and it's very important that it's a team endeavor. Right. For instance, at Mayo, I do these with my colleague Harold Burkhardt, as we were right, discussing. Right. But after all of that, there's an upfront cost. The downstream benefits are pronounced. So it, with the pending implementation of the Affordable Care Act, we're all needing to be more fiscally responsible in medicine. But the benefit of robotics is it's able to introduce a high-technology 
uh, uh, platform to help patients early on, and therefore, by 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 applying tailored post-operative pathways, we're actually able to introduce this benefit patients in a cost-neutral manner. Okay. So, in other words, costs are equivalent or slightly lower in some situations. Well, I mean, I think I mean you, you, again, it's a very valid point. I mean, I can't. I think you're right. I can't overemphasize that you need really high-volume surgeons doing doing this. The final question: There's been some negative press about robotic surgery in general recently about complications or something like that but I don't think that was cardiac robotics is that is that correct yeah that's correct that was in the in the OBGYN in urology spheres uh, but again I would go back to a couple of key points number one don't change your operation you keep it safe you do the categories of leaflet prolapse that you're familiar with and your team is familiar with you keep the operation short you think about the patient and you decrease cost. It's a win-win situation for everybody, the patient, the healthcare system, and society. I don't, I don't even need an operation. Maybe I'll go get one. So, <laughs> sounds good. Let me ask you finally your thoughts about the mitral conclave. And this is an incredible um, meeting for me as a cardiologist. Absolutely. You know, it's very rare in life that you walk into a room with a thousand people thinking about the same thing you are, and you feel the buzz, and it makes you want to be a better surgeon and a better academic clinician. This is the meeting. The mitral conclave has done that, and I'm very impressed. It's fabulous. Listen, thanks for visiting with us. Thanks for all you're doing. Thanks, Randy. Great. Thank you.